what I've done is I've also, uh, like I said, partnered up with them to give out a free copy of their software to one of you guys. And I'm gonna explain how to get that later in this video. Lastly, on top of all that, I'm also gonna be sharing with you guys this product validation sheet. Um, this is something that until this point I've only shared with people in the Ecom Limitless course. I know that again, a lot of people have these, these you know, issues and struggle with this stuff. So I will be sharing it with you guys. Again, I don't want your emails. You don't need any of that stuff. I'll explain to you guys later in this video how to get it and, and what to do uh, you know, when, you, when you get it, how to, how to actually use it. I'll, I'll explain that in, in this video later on. Hey, how's it going guys, Anif here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about a complete guide to Amazon FBA product research. Uh, and we're really gonna go over everything you need to know when doing product research and the best product research methods uh, that are working right now. Um, but it's not gonna be just that, right? There's gonna be a lot more in this video. We're gonna go really in depth uh, and not just talk about the best product research methods, but also about product validation and um, you know, really getting into my head uh, when I'm doing product research and really what I teach my students in the Ecom Limitless program as well, uh, sharing that with you guys, which I've never done before. So hopefully you guys see some value in this, right? Um, if you're new and you're just finding out about selling on Amazon, or even if you've been trying to find a product for a long time, uh, but you can't seem to find a profit one or you know, maybe you've invested in some and they just haven't turned out well, uh, this video is perfect for you, right? This is exactly why I'm putting this together because there's far too many people struggling with product research uh, just because they don't have the information. And that's exactly what I wanna do in this video is uh, release that information, which you know usually has only been held in, in courses and stuff that you gotta pay for, uh, for free for you guys. Um, now, if you stumbled on this video because you just can't seem to find the right product, uh, it's not your fault, right? There's a ton of different uh, people out there who um, you know, claim you can find the best products, super profitable products, $40,000, $50,000 per month products in you know, five minutes or less, right? And um, you know, even, even myself, you know, I've had videos like that in the past with kind of those titles, fall into that clickbait trap. Uh, but the truth is I've realized that this is a huge disservice to you and that's exactly why uh, I wanna do it differently, right? Um, you know, those are just a ton of people who, who, who post you know, titles like that. And you know what, it works, right? It gets views and, and um, you know, people click and watch just because it gets into your um, kind of innate desire to, you know, make a lot of money in very little effort. Uh, but again, like I said, that's a disservice to you and that's why I wanna do something different in this video, right? Um, so like I said, these videos get thousands of work because people want instant gratification for no work. Um, that's not where you're gonna end this video. Uh, I won't promise instant wealth in minutes because that's a lie, right? I mean, I think that even when you click these videos, you know uh, it's not true, right? And so um, I live by a motto where, no, you know, nothing in life worth having comes easily. And I think that if you live by that motto, you're never gonna get disappointed. And also you're just gonna be a lot more, um, you're gonna realize when people are trying to kind of pull one over on you. So if you're watching right now and you're not afraid of a little hard work, uh, this video is for you, right? Because there will be work. Um, but this is a complete guide, right? It will take some time for me to explain everything you need to know and go into detail, right? This is not, I'm not gonna be able to show you this in five minutes. Um, so if you don't have the attention span to sit and watch video, uh, this video to the end, right, to the completion, then you know don't bother watching it because if you watch a part of it or just a fraction, you're really not gonna get what you need to know and um, it, it's not gonna help you. So don't waste your time watching it if you're not gonna watch it to completion, just click off now. Uh, I'm gonna save you some time because this is gonna be you know, a little bit of a longer video and it's gonna take me some time to get into it. So um, only watch this if you have the time to and if you are serious about this, right? Um, if you're not, you know, check the description. I've left some playlists of some videos that might help you out. Uh, you know, Stuff you can waste your time with instead of watching this video, you know, daily dose of internet type stuff, uh, really you know, short clips, uh, you know, spammy to keep the attention span. Uh, there but for those of you guys who can uh you know bear with this video then stick around because you're going to find some value uh so for those of you who are still here awesome let's get into it right let's start breaking down what a successful product actually looks like so that you understand uh what it is um, a profitable product actually uh you know is so first off you probably know this right high demand a lot of people want it super simple so i won't spend a lot of time on that low availability you know that's the supply and demand thing right um, especially that you can't find it anywhere except online, right? Because um, if you can find the products, let's say if you can go to Walmart or you can go you know, to Indigo or you know, any of these kind of stores and you can find the product there, most likely um, you know, people might do that instead of actually buying it online. So um, the best way is to sell a product that you can't find anywhere except for online right now. And that's usually products that are coming up and um, kind of newer products. Uh, which you can build brands around. Uh, number three is a wow factor. So it's attention grabbing in some way. It can't just be like a screw, right? For the most part, uh, people don't really care about that. It's not sexy. And so, um, you know, unfortunately, 
it's it's probably not going to be your best bet but again there are always caveats to to this right there's always going to be products you know there's going to be a screw that's going to make a hundred thousand dollars a month um you know someone's going to reinvent it and make something awesome with it but i'm saying as a general rule of thumb right this is a really important one it's one it's a product that solves a problem if your product doesn't solve a problem if it has no real purpose uh then uh you know it's not going to be good so back brace helps solves back pain right because if someone has back pain um, they're gonna need to find a product to, to solve their back pain, right? But if you just sell like a, uh, let's say a, like a couch pillow, right? It, it's a lot more difficult to sell that product. And also, um, you know, in that situation, a lot of people just go for the best price. You know, whoever has the cheapest, you can't really build a cool brand around it. And, um, you know, there's no real pain point there. Just as an example, uh, again, there are caveats to this, but uh, as a, you know, general rule of thumb, all right? Um, also, you want good numbers, so high profit margin and high ROI, which a lot of people don't talk about, the ROI, which we will go through in this video. Uh, and those are kind of the, um, you know, the things you need to know when you're looking for a product. Just, just kind of make sure that they, the, the product that you find falls into these things, right? So um, to determine a good product, obviously you need to know uh what you know what sells how much money each thing is making and luckily on amazon we actually can do that with certain softwares uh so the software i'm going to be using today is actually helium 10. we're going to use it for product research and some keyword research and stuff like that to really determine what is good and what isn't um so for those of you who don't have product research software it is a must right if you have you know been trying to do product research without product research uh, software you're wasting your time there's absolutely no uh reason to, to be doing it because uh, you're gonna get a product that doesn't sell well, has low demand, and you're just gonna ultimately lose a ton of money on inventory and stuff like that because really no one's gonna care about your product. So if you're thinking that you can save money on product research uh, by you know not buying a product research tool, you, you just stop doing Amazon all completely because you're gonna you know you're gonna lose all your money. So uh, it is a must if you're serious about this. You know you you, got, you gotta get one right and. Um, I'm not just saying that because, you know, I, I do have a partnership with Helium 10, an affiliate uh, link with, you know, commissions that I make from that. Um, you kind of just just need it, right? So if you don't trust me, if you don't want my links, you know, go elsewhere, right? But um, I've partnered up with them to get the lowest prices available anywhere uh, online. So check the link, check the descriptions for links. Uh, I believe you can either get 50% off, off, off the first month or 10% off uh, every single month uh, that you're, you know, with them. Uh, on top of that, what I've done is I've also, uh, like I said, partnered up with them to give out a free copy of their software to one of you guys. And I'm going to explain how to get that later in this video. So stick around, watch the video, and um, you know, somewhere later on, I'm going to be uh, explaining how you can actually uh, get that. Now, uh, lastly, on top of all that, I'm also going to be sharing with you guys this product validation sheet. Um, this is something that, until this point, I've only shared with people in the Ecom Limitless course. Uh, that's my you know private course. Um, but... I know that again, a lot of people have these these you know, issues and struggle with this stuff. So I will be sharing it with you guys. Again, I don't want your emails. You don't need any of that stuff. Uh, I'll just have a link down below, and I'll explain to you guys later in this video how to get it and, and what to do. Uh, you know, when you when you get it, how to how to actually use it. I'll, I'll explain that in, in this video later on. All right. So here is our product validation sheet. We're going to be using this when we're doing our product research to understand how the market you know looks. Uh, and also we have rules and things to follow to make sure that um, this is actually a, a gonna be a good product. So once you do get the link to this, all you're gonna wanna do is click on file, make a copy, and then that's gonna add that to your own Google Sheets so that you can actually, um, you know, uh, edit it. Cause if you, if you, you know, the link you're gonna get, you're not gonna be able to edit it. What I wanna show you guys right now is a little bit of a case study of how I found a pretty interesting uh, market to go into. And um, so, so this is a product research that I've done uh, in the past. And um, the way you do want to get started with your product research, when you do sit down, the first thing you want to do is have a starting point. And that's what I call it. There's, um, you know, a couple different starting points you can have, which I'll share with you guys today. And then also, um, you know, the main product research method, which I use uh, to find basically all my products nowadays. It's, it's the same uh, exact process. It, it, that's the second part of it. <clears throat> so the first part, you can do a bunch of different things. Uh, and this is just to get the ball rolling because when you just you know get on Amazon, you're like, okay, well, how do I start my product research? You know, what do I really even you know do? Um, so there's the easiest way, and probably you know um, probably one that you guys can all start off with is just go to Helium 10. Once you log in, just click on product research and click on bl uh, black box. 
And what this is gonna do is you're gonna be able to fill a bunch of different categories, monthly revenue, price minimums, and just type in uh, the different stuff in here and then press search. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull up a bunch of different products that fit those specific criteria that you've put in here. Uh, and then those will give you starting points to do the second part of our product research uh, you know, method. So I'm not gonna really go too much into this because probably most of you guys know how to use it. If you don't, I'll leave some links um, in the description to uh, you know, help you learn how to use black box you know, um, efficiently. Uh, but in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna show you kind of the ones that I started using. And, and another really, really simple one um, is actually using Amazon internal data, right? Uh, but before, before I do jump into that, one just quick note is if you're selling in um, the US, but you're from out of, out of country, right? Like for myself, I'm in Canada, right? Um, when I go on amazon.com, I'm gonna see my deliver to address here. Usually it's gonna be my Canadian address. Uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have a US zip code here because if you don't, it's gonna show you, it's gonna show you only a fraction of the products that are on the market and it won't give you a clear picture about um, you know, how the market really looks like. So make sure that you have a US um, zip code here. You can find one, you can use the same one I'm using here. You can find one online. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure it's delivered in the US. Um, so that is that. Now let's talk about the internal data search. Many of you guys probably know this as well, but all this is is, is just simply typing random uh, letters into the search bar here. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull up the most search for things on Amazon and try to autofill and suggest for you. So you can see if I type B, you know, first thing that comes up is baby wipes. That's the most searched for thing, um, you know, after someone types B. Uh, then you can do like uh, BU, you know, like bubble wrap, right? And you can just continue to do that, you know, bunch O balloons, bungee cords with hooks. That's another, you know, that's a really great way to start, right? Bungee cords with hooks, that's an amazing place to start off with and then you can really, you know, do our second part of the product research, which I'll show you in this just a second. But the case study I'm trying to show you is a cool product I found uh, by doing this exact thing. So I, I typed in K, then A, and uh, I saw somewhere here it said kayak accessories. I don't know where it is now, kayak. So they do change too, right? So this is something uh, that you'll, you'll notice is that they do change. Okay, so I, I clicked on kayak accessories. That was, you know, I typed in KA and kayak accessories was one of them. And this is actually a really good, uh, you know, example because what kayak, a kayak accessories is kind of a really broad, you know, term, right? And, and when you're doing your product research, you wanna start kind of broad because what this is gonna allow you to do is like, look how many different types of products there are here, right? There's uh, these uh, kayak like paddle grips, there's, um, you know, kayak bags, there's uh, hats, uh, you know, hooks, paddles, like there's a whole bunch of different things that you, can, that you can find here. And that's a really great starting point is there's something really broad, not very specific, so that you can look at the general market and the niche to understand what's going on here. So this is a good example of that. So what you wanna do after that is open up your Helium 10 extension. Uh, it's called X-Ray, open that up. And what this is gonna show us is, um, if you guys probably know this, but it's gonna show you, you know, the, the ASIN, the product uh, brand, um, the, the title, the price, you know, how much it's selling for, uh, how much it's making, so the revenue, and this is exactly why we have our product research be tools, because um, this uses kind of like a, an algorithm to understand how much something is selling, and they're very, very accurate, right? They're, they're not 100%, but I'd say 95% accurate, um, it, it, you know, I'd say it is. Uh, so uh, what you wanna do here, uh, when you come into a market like this, is you wanna start to understand, okay, so what I'm looking for here is a product that has obviously high revenues, but reviews that are not so high compared to the revenue, right? And one thing that immediately, you know, stood out to me was actually this one right here. So it was the Hida Waterproof Dry Bag, okay? And this product's making $234,000 in estimated, you know, per month, right? That's not per year, that's per month. Um, and it has 1,305 reviews, so the review count here. Really cool thing that you get with uh, Helium 10 X-Ray 2 is it actually shows you the review velocity. And what this means is if you just hover over that, let me just show you this, what it, what it does when you hover over that, it says change in review count over the last 30 days. So in, in the last 30 days, this product got 492 reviews. So basically almost one half of its reviews, of its total reviews, right, maybe like, uh, you know, 40% of its total reviews, it got in the past month. Now what this tells me is that this product is, you know, kind of on the upswing. It's selling a lot, a lot of units. And so a lot, a lot of people are actually, you know, leaving reviews on it. So that's what that tells me. Whereas something like, you know, 19 reviews, right? It probably doesn't have that many sales. 13 reviews, not that many sales uh, because not that many people are leaving reviews. So um, what I did here is, you know, 
found it interesting, whenever you find something interesting, you know, click on it and kind of inspect it further. And this is really where our second part of our, uh, you know, product research really comes in. So in this case, this product has sizes, you know, whenever something has sizes, variations, something like that, it might ask you to select the size first before you can see the buy box. So in this case, I had to you know, select the size and it's showing me the buy box. If you don't know what the buy box is, this is it where it says, you know, add to cart. That's what you're looking for here. And the first thing I did, right, uh, just to kind of backtrack a little bit is when I see a product like this, right, something that doesn't have a ton of, you know, um, let's say a ton of reviews, uh, it doesn't have, you know, great pictures, especially for something that's making, you know, nearly $250,000 a month. You know, these pictures aren't that great. This is not that great um, of a listing in general. I start to think that maybe this product is, you know, maybe some sort of brand that I don't know about because a lot of times brands have some sort of like selling power off of Amazon, right? So then you can post it on Amazon and then, you know, if they have like, you know, people who know about the brand, they just type it on Amazon, they find it because they already have brand recognition. So what I'd like to do first is like when there's a product like this with like, you know, huge kind of, you know, sales, but the reviews are, you know, a thousand, you know, if it was 10,000, then I'd, you know, be like, okay, you know, that makes sense. But a thousand is a lot of reviews, but not that many to have that, you know, 250,000 in sales, right? So what I do in this situation usually is I try to do some background research on the company itself because if the company's a brand and it's a very, very known brand in the space, you're really not gonna be able to compete with it for the most part, all right, especially if you're starting off. So what I did was I just typed in Hita because that was the brand name, just so you guys see here. It says Hita Waterproof Dry Bag. And usually you can see stuff. So it says, you know, a hair scalp massager, Hita scalp shampoo brush. I was like, okay, when I, when I was doing this product, research, I was like, that's interesting. Like, they sell a bag for kayaking, but then they also sell like some sort of hair massager or something. Like that's weird, right? And um, another thing I noticed is that they have a website, iheeda.com. And then next to it, I see that it says Shenzhen Hungru Intelligence Te Technology Company. Now this means to me that it's 100% a Chinese company, right? It's just a Chinese seller who's selling on Amazon as well uh, for obvious reasons. So I clicked on it and I started looking through the, the, the products and, and kind of what they sell here. And, I, and again, what I'm looking for here is to understand if it's some sort of brand that I don't know about, right? And has like, you know, big um, brand recognition. So in this case, uh, I went to products, and you go to all products, and I noticed that they sell a whole bunch of different stuff here. Like they're selling hair massagers, they're selling rings, they're selling, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And also they're selling the dry bag. So what this is showing me right now is right away, I know that this is some sort of private label business from China, uh, not a brand at all, right? So this is not a brand. This look at this website. I don't even know what is going on here. It just looks horrible, right? So um, I, I like they send, they sell essential oils. There's no uh, sort of like brand fluency where they're selling one similar product. It's just kayak accessories or it's just like they're selling the dry bag, right? So I know that they are some sort of third party manufacturing. That's exactly what I need to know and exactly what I want to know because the next step here is to go into their sold by section. So this is part two of every single product research thing that I do. So I find a, you know interesting product, interesting niche, and then I go into the sold by section. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take us to this set, this place where it's kind of their storefront. And then you click on here where it says heat a direct storefront. Now, this is gonna show me all of the products that this seller sells on Amazon. And as you can see, you know, there's a decent amount and they're all random. They have no kind of correlation with each other. There's like a potty for kids. There's like some sort of another like body brush. Okay, whatever. One thing that a lot of people don't know you can do on this page is actually open up the, um, you know, Helium 10 extension or any extension that you're using on this page. And it's gonna show you how much each of those products on the storefront is making. So you can really tell how much the seller is making. You know, for this hair massager, right, this one right here that we saw, it's making $450,000 per month. Another one is $160,000, $179,000. You can see everything. And right here is where you can find also, where is our bag? So the bag is right here. hundred seventy nine. so it just changed, okay? So it went from like 200 something thousand to 179000 So you really gotta make sure that you're watching these because they can obviously change as the algorithm changes. But either way, it's an, it's an insane amount of money, right? Um, so here's this product, okay? Um, let's say I'm interested in selling this product, right? You, you know, there are rules, but I'll show you. So you can see this product and you can see all the other products. So we'll keep this page open um, because there's something else I wanna show you that they're selling uh, because you can see everything they're selling, right? You can see like all the other products. Maybe you, you can find something else that has 
you know, good revenue, low reviews, for example, you know, this thing, right? Fish scale has 20,000, 21,000, you know, sales, only 199 reviews, 48 change in the past 30 days, which means it's selling pretty well. It's got a good revenue. It's got fairly low reviews and we can dig into that market as well. But we were first talking about the um, waterproof bag, right? So let's look into this. First thing you want to do here is go into all departments, right? And what I do is I want to type in the, the main keyword a customer would search up. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to take a better, closer look at the actual niche of waterproof dry bags. Before we were looking at kayak accessory niche, which is kind of a huge, huge broad niche. When you find a product that you're interested in selling, in this case, let's say we're interested in selling this waterproof bag, it kind of looks good, you know, doesn't got like 10,000, doesn't have 10,000 plus reviews. What you want to do is you want to look at the niche, kind of narrow it down. So we started up here with kind of like the broad kayak accessories. Now we're going to bring it down here to waterproof dry bags. So let's type in waterproof dry bags. And that's something I think, uh, you know, a customer would search up for. And another thing we can do is we can even do it like um, even, even more uh, niche, which is for kayaking, right? And then we can see how this market looks like. So this is super, super niche. Um, so we see that, so these are all sponsored. I would say ignore the sponsored listings and look at the main ones here. So we have 4,000 reviews, 1,300 reviews, 6,000 reviews. The first three guys have over 1,000 reviews each. Now, if we go back to my product validation sheet, what you really want to be doing here is you want to be, so for this example, we would type in our main keyword, the one that we searched up here, which was, where was it here? What did we search up? Waterproof dry bags or kayaking. So this is what you want to know because this is what you searched up for. So you know, paste that in if for a later date if you want to know what you searched up. Then you put in the listing for competitor one. I'm all over the place here, guys. Competitor one, which would these guys just take his listing, uh, take his uh, URL. So you'd come in here, take his URL, and then toss it into your competitor one section here. Just so you know how you that you can come back and you can see that and you you know see the listing. Then you want to go to competitor two, three, etc. So I'm going to delete this for now because it's blocking stuff. Competitor two, three. Then you also want to put the prices one, two, three. You want to if, uh, fill in the reviews one, two, three. Just this means you know the reviews for competitor one, the reviews for competitor two. So that's the price for competitor one, price for competitor two. You put the monthly revenues for each of three of them, and then we're going to also get into later on the product cost, product profit, and the product ROI, which I will show you guys how to do in a second. You know here, but. That's how you do the first part here. And the reason you want to do this is because you fill it in so that you have uh, all in one place and then you can go through and you can decide if it qualifies or not for our, um, you know, for the criteria that I have set for you guys. All right. So here's the criteria. The first criteria, and it's the first one because it's the easiest to narrow, uh, to kind of uh, cancel out a product right away. If two out of the three main competitors have less than 1000 reviews, right? So if we go to our product here, which was the kayak bags, right? The first three competitors, the top three competitors, right? At one, two, and three, okay? Do two out of three of them have less than a thousand reviews? The answer is no, which means that this product is far too competitive for us starting off, and I wouldn't recommend starting off with it. So right away, you can just cancel that one out, right? Another thing we talk about is profit margin. You want more than 25%, ROI, more than 130. Revenue, we want more than 7,000 in revenue because you wanna be able to make sure that you're having a healthy, you know, kind of source of income, right? You don't want to only be making like 500 bucks a month from this. You want to be making, you know, some sizable amount of money and be able to grow it from there. Uh, the product's not restricted, which I'll show you guys how to do in a second. Not patented. For me, I can show you guys how to do this actually. Um, all you want to do is you want to type in uh, fiverr.com, okay? And I'll leave links to this below, but you probably know this. And I just type in patent search. This is how I get all my patent search done. And um, I use Pro USA, you know, once you find a product that fits all our criteria, get a patent search done. Um, and this guy's like some, you know, he has 6,000, you know, 5,200 reviews. He's a, he, he does a great job. And I would say all you need is the basic plan, right? So you can just search him up. That's the one I use. And I think he's, he's great at what he does. Um, let's go back to our, our, our thing here. And, and, you know, don't only spend money on the patent check once you've actually, you know, made sure that everything else, you know, makes sense here. Uh, not a gated product or in a gated category. Again, I will show you guys how to do that. Um, I will leave links down below to actually where you can check that. But essentially, all you do is you just type in, you know, restricted products list Amazon. And you should be able to find it here. Restricted products. 
So, so you find a seller central link and then you've got to go through this and you've got to find uh, all the, you know, so here are all the restricted products and you can click on them, right? Let's say gam uh, hazardous, dangerous items. And then you've got to, you know, it has a bunch of examples of stuff that you can't sell. So you really do need to make sure that it's not restricted. You also need to make sure that it's not gated. The way you do that is you type in um, gated categories, Amazon. And I'm not sure if this is the website that's Jungle Scout. Uh, let's get it from the source, which is Seller Central's. Uh, categories requiring approval. You can come in here. You can play around with this and it's going to show you all the category, categories uh, requiring approval so that you can sell in them as well. So these are checks that you want to do before obviously you invest in anything and before you you know deem a product good or not because it could be uh, that it's in a gated category which would suck for you because if you you know buy products and then they say hey you can't sell it uh, you know that's not great so that's why we got that there as well um, and then does not require any special certifications to sell in this is something that you're gonna have to do you're just gonna have to email Amazon their their customer support and be like hey does this require any sort of certifications to sell in because just as an example a product that requires certifications to sell are any sort of baby products, okay? Um, they require cert certifications to sell, and um, if you don't have them, you can't sell, okay? So, so that's just something to make sure. But that's how you use this sheet, and we'll we'll go, you know, forward, and I'll explain more how to how to use this, uh, you, know, you know, all the other kind of steps in here too. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a little longer video, but I think it's going to provide a lot of value. So from here, uh, one more thing. So so just to kind of show you guys where we're at here is uh, we're on the storefront of the seller, right? So we already determined that this waterproof bag isn't for us, it's kind of too competitive and um, it wouldn't be a great product to go into. So what else I found interesting is if you open it up, you can look at all the products they have, right? Like I said, you can also click on load more results here and this is going to show you all the different products that they sell. You can keep loading until the products run out. So these are all the products that this company has, Hita, okay? This one right here looked Pretty interesting to me again like I said because of the relatively high uh, you know um, revenue and the relatively low review so let's open that up all right now it's gonna open it up in a separate link here and all this is it looks to me like you know it's a fish scale I mean pictures are all right they're not that great um, you know nothing special here I don't know what honey wants from me um, so they're not that great all right what you want to do though is we go back to all departments like I said Right, this is the second part, right? You're gonna go storefront to storefront to storefront until you find something interesting. In this case, go to all departments, type in um, fish scale, okay? Now fish scale, we believe is the main keyword because I mean, I think that's what a customer would search up. Just to show you a quick example, if you're not sure like what the main keyword could be, because I know that like a lot of people might not understand what I mean by main keyword or you might not know what somebody, what a customer would search up in some cases. What you can do is you can go to Helium 10. Now this is all included with your you know, subscription when you, when you sign up, right? You can go to keyword research. Then you can type in Cerebro or click the Cerebro icon. And then go to, let's say, let's say we go to the main guy in this market, which is, so actually, let's say we went to this guy, right? This is the product that we found. This is the heat up one that we found. Just come in here into the, into the, um, into the, type, um, I'll bring it down so you guys can see, into the URL and take the ASIN, which is this thing right here. Copy that, I'll bring that back up. Copy that and then put it into Cerebro, right here, product ASIN. Press get keywords. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna show us all the keywords that this product is ranking for. Usually people use this to find, you know, do the keyword research on your products when you're, once you're actually creating your listing, but it's really good in product research as well because of something that you can do here. So. Um, when I come in here, don't be kind of overwhelmed with everything that you're looking at here. All you want to do, all you want to do is type in one to five here on organic rank and then press apply. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to show us every keyword that this product ranks for organically in the first to the fifth position, which is going to help us understand what is the main keyword that people are searching up to find this product. We go to search volume. When you click that, it's going to organize a search volume in from, uh, the most searches to the least searches. And then right here, as you can see, the main keyword at the top is usually the main keyword. It says fish scale, right? So that's exactly what we typed in. We typed in fish scale uh, because, you know, we thought that was the main keyword. Just We just confirmed it that it's fish scale because as you can see here, it has 20,000 searches. The next one down is hanging scale, um, which I mean is also a keyword for this, but it's not the main keyword. Most people are typing in fish scale. So that's how we know that. And then if we went to our, you know, uh, to our product validation sheet, we would type in fish scale. 
and we would search up that keyword into the Amazon search bars. We would ignore all the sponsored listings and we come down here. So we have number one, two, and three. These are the top three sellers. If we open up the uh, Chrome extension here. We can take a look at, again, just disregard these SPs right here. SP means sponsored products. We always ignore those because people are paying to show up there. Um, you can also, if you just want to you know, delete them, you can just press these trash cans and they'll delete them from the search. Now, the first one here, like this is, this is the first one that we saw. Uh, that's the one that has the 4,000 reviews. This is kind of the main one in the market. He has 4,000 reviews, 75,000 in revenue. So that's like you know, high revenue, but also very high reviews, right? And then this is the Hito one that we saw, which 21,200 reviews. And the third guy has 21,500 uh, reviews, essentially. The fourth one has a similar product, yeah, 41,600 reviews. So when we go to our product validation sheet, again, you put in your competitors. I'm not going to do all that. You put in the prices. This is just for you to see because we're going to, you know, when you're doing product research, you want to have a bunch of options. You don't want to just bank on one product. So I would say, you know, fill this in at least five products before you start making your decisions, right? Uh, anything that you find interesting. Then you put the reviews in, monthly revenue. Um, and again, like I said, I will go over product costs and all that stuff. But let's look at, you know, if this if this fits our criteria right now, right? Just from the first one, two out of three main, uh, main competitors have less than 1,000 reviews. So the answer to that is yes, because we just saw here, if we close this, 4,000, 200, 4, uh, 500, 600. So yes, two out of the top three do have less than uh, 1,000 reviews. So that passes that criteria. The next thing, profit margin more than 25%. So how do we actually calculate that? So you know, if we're trying to validate this product. As a quick check, I go to alibaba.com. You guys probably know this. And what you type in here is obviously the main keyword, which we found out was fish scale. From here, okay, so... <laughs> I haven't done this far, so this is this is funny, right? Because this is not at all what we're looking for. Um, let's see what it could be. Fish scale, or okay. So here it would be a little bit different because obviously this is not our product. N nothing here I see is our product. We see fish, okay? This happens because Alibaba, you know, obviously Chinese suppliers, there's probably stuff that gets lost in uh, communication. So let's do hanging fish scale. Let's see if that works. Okay, so that's closer. That's closer. There we are. So these are the ones that we're kind of looking looking at here. Hanging. Maybe we can even try hanging scale, and then remove the fish so it doesn't get confused. Um, and this is all live, guys. You know, this is this is calm. I'm trying to show you guys how to, you know, do this. Let's see what they do. handheld. Handheld scale, maybe. Handheld scale. Okay, nope. Hanging fish scale. Let's go back to that one. I think that was the closest one that we had. Okay, so let's say we're doing this one, this digital fish, digital fishing weight scales. Okay, and you can go through these and you can find, I'm sure you can find all the exact same ones that these guys are selling here. Like literally, I'm pretty sure this is the same thing. Let's see. So this product is this, so this one. Let's open up Alibaba and just make sure that it's the same. So this looks essentially the same to me, but I want to make sure. Let's see. I mean, it looks, the buttons are a little bit different, but it's very, it's very, very similar. Okay. And I'm sure that, you know, this manufacturer also sells, um, you know, different kind of variations of these and you can search up through Alibaba and find them. Um, but before we actually do commit to that, you want to click on trade assurance and verified supplier. Because we're not really going out here to find a supplier. What we're doing here is we're just going on to try to find um, the general market price for this product. So let's see here. Okay, so this one's between 180 and 190. This is 211 through 82. They're, they're different styles, but they're similar. Say 290. So uh, that's a diff completely different. So let's say what I'm seeing here is approximately would cost us, I would say with all our customizations, everything, three dollars and fifty cents per unit okay and the reason i'm saying that is because i'm not seeing it go past about three dollars but with customizations and stuff like that um you know the price probably will be a little bit higher than what it shows here so just estimate a higher price uh than the average of what it shows so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our our, our, our um, you know product listing here 
and we're going to open up this time. We're going to click on the extension. This time we're going to type in profitability calculator. Okay. And many of you guys probably know this. If you don't, what this does is it just pulls up the FBA fees and all that kind of stuff so that we can start understanding what our profit margins are going to be like and our ROI is going to be like so that we can understand if this is going to be a good product or not to go into. Now, for estimated freight cost, I remove this number because, you know, doesn't even there's no need for that. Unit manufacturing cost estimate. It says 260. I would put 350 just to be safe. Now, as you can see here, it starts to get a little bit dicey because if we go to estimated freight cost, I mean, we're paying $3.50. That's what I wrote there. And on the bottom here, you can see our, our profit margin and our ROIs, right? We have certain numbers that we need to, to hit to make sure that these are actually going to be profitable for us. All right, we're back. My battery died, but I was saying that at $11.99, um, even not counting the freight cost, the numbers don't look great, right? Because if you look at the net, we're at 319. That's our profit margin. Uh, you know, that's the, the, like the dollar figure that we'd be making after a total FBA fees, which are uh, right here. So FBA fees, 348. Referral fees, $1.80. So total, um, it just, you know, we wouldn't be left with much. We'd have a 26%, you know, margin and a 90% uh, ROI. Now, if we go to our product validation sheet, You'd fill that on all in here, right? You put the competitor one, two, three prices, like I mentioned, and that's where you get the product cost. You'd go to Alibaba, like I just showed, product profit, uh, which we just showed there, and product ROI. So this is, like I said, the profit margin is lower than 25%, so that would disqualify this product. The ROI is less than 130%, which that would disqualify this product. The revenue is more than 7,000, but um, you know the rest of the stuff doesn't add up. So that's kind of how we do that. Now, I just want to recap quickly and also tell you guys now about how to win the Helium 10 uh, subscription and how to get your copy of the product uh, validation sheet. So let's just recap quickly. What I did here, okay, is you have a starting point. Like I mentioned, there's a ton of different starting points. We have a bunch of, you know, different product research method, methods on the channel. Uh, you can check out as well. And what these are going to do is they're going to show you a place to start off with, something to get started. From there, what you want to do is you want to uh, look at some at the storefront of you know some interesting product. So in this case, let's say you know at this point we realize that hey, fish scales are not a good thing, right? What we could do is we could go to a different seller, right? We've been at Hita, we looked at his storefront. Maybe we don't find anything else that interests us. But now we looked at this market. You know, it didn't work out for us. This is not the fish scale market that we wanted to go into, or you know the numbers didn't look great. Where do we go from here? You don't need to go back to a starting point. You can actually continue down what I like to call here is like a rabbit hole, right? Now that we got into this market, we can actually click on this guy. His name is Dr. Meter, right? I'm not sure I haven't gone this far, but again, what we're gonna do here is go to his sold by section and then click on his storefront and see what else this guy's selling. And as you can see, this is gonna go down some sort of like rabbit hole that like never ends, right? So let's say we, we come in here, we open up Helium 10, we check out any products that look, you know, again, higher revenues, lower reviews, stuff that's going to interest us. So rechargeable air pump, right? Like that looks cool. Um, again, this guy's obviously a third party uh, kind of seller. He's a private labeler because he has all sorts of different types of products. No real, you know, cohesive brand in here, which is a good thing. That's kind of what you're looking for. And look for anything that has a good, um, you know, revenue to reviews ratio. So this has 2000 reviews. Uh, let's see. 415, 24,000, um, 415 reviews, 24,000 in revenue. Now, again, remember what we do, right? You can go to Cerebro, pull that keyword, find the main keywords from here, and then type in. In this case, I believe, just from my experience, I think this would probably be uh, called a, a, you know, air pump. Like, you know, I think that's all that would be really be called. And as you can see here, so these are all sponsored. Again, ignore the sponsored listings. And then let's go to these. Right now, as you can see, one guy has 2,255, then there's 5,500, but this is actually not an electronic air pump, so I wouldn't consider this a direct competitor. Um, but you know, this guy has 270, 624, um, let's see the third one. So this guy has 13,000, but again, that's some sort of generator. Um, so as a, at a quick glance, if we put this into our product validation sheet, it would seem that you know the reviews are actually good. You know, there are two out of three main competitors less than 1,000 reviews because like I said, you know, the, this one right here uh, is like a hand one, doesn't count really, right? Cause we're talking about these ones, the ones with the um, you know, electronic ones. So we could even put electric air pump and then we can see that even better here. So ignore the sponsored. 
So one, two, three, right? They have less than a thousand reviews. Two out of three have less than a thousand reviews, which means this could be a promising product to go to. And then we just rinse and repeat the process with the product validation sheet to see if this is something good. Now let's assume it's not good. Let's assume this is not something that we see any value in, right? So let's go into the bestseller, the top guy, which is this guy. And his name is, go to storefront, is this Mom, Mombate USA. Okay, let's click on that. Let's go to storefront. And now let's see what products this guy's selling. So as you can see, I call this the rabbit hole. We go deeper and deeper, and deeper, and some, and, and this really never ends because look at this. So this guy has some smoke machines we can, we can check out. Um, but what you want to do again is you want to find the ones with the high revenue, low reviews, uh, and then, you know, dig deeper. So here's a great one. Okay. So that's retard, rechargeable air pump. So <laughs> it looks good because the numbers look good. Um, what do we have here then too? Um, let's see. The LED, the smoke machine, 15,086 reviews. This looks awesome. So let's open that up and we'll check that out as well. And then again, you go into the main keywords, you find them, you make sure it's actually something, you know, good to go into. If it's not, you'd go to the main competitor and you go into their storefront and you go deeper and deeper. Now, one other main thing that I want to mention is that you want to check for seasonality. And a great way to check for seasonality is with this Helium 10 graph. It's automatically going to be put into your um, detail page once you install the Chrome extension. All you want to do is go to all time. And you can see uh, the lower this red bar is to the bottom, the better it's selling. The higher it is, the worse it's selling. So you're looking for any huge peaks and valleys, right? So in this case, there are some, you know, pe uh, you know peaks up, which is bad around like winter time. And then, you know, around here, it's going down then March. So it was a little bit unstable, but since you know May 1st, 2020, it looks like it's been fairly stable selling pretty well throughout. What you don't wanna see something like all over the place consistently up and down, that's not good. You wanna see low to the, to the bottom here means it's selling really, really well. Uh, also this blue bar just means the price point it was at when it was selling. So that's a really great way to check profit, um, not profitability, but uh, seasonality. All right. If it's all over the place, you know, constantly all throughout, it doesn't, it's probably not a great thing. You want to see it flat line and stay fl relatively flat throughout the whole year. That's how you know it sells well, you know, throughout the whole year. So that is that. Now, um, this right here was just a kind of a quick glimpse into this kind of stuff that we teach in the Ecom Limitless program. Okay. The course that I have, hopefully you found some value in it. If you are serious about doing Amazon and you want to take something to the next level, you want to have a mentor, someone to help you, you know, work with me directly check the link down below. All right. Um, you know, we can get started. And if you liked any of the value here, I mean, you'll be blown away by the program as well. Now to the more serious things, you know, things that like, you know, you can get help with immediately, right? Because, um, I know that a lot of people can't afford a program or, you know, for whatever reason, doesn't matter. Right. Um, in the link below, uh, you have a, in the description below, you have a link to, uh, the product validation sheet. All you're going to do is click on a file, uh, and then, like I said, make a copy and you'll be able to edit your own. Um, as for the Helium 10 uh, winners and, and you know, who, who's going to win the subscription, all you got to do, okay, this is for subscribers. This is for people who support the channel. No, we've been having, you know, great support. Um, obviously, it's for a subscriber. So if you're new here, you know, subscribe to the channel. Um, you know, there's a lot more awesome stuff coming in the future. And uh, if this is, you know, if this, if you found value in this, you're going to love it, right? Uh, another thing is just like the video and then leave a comment letting me know why you should get the Helium 10 subscription because I want to give it to somebody who, um, you know, really needs it, right? Because if you already have one or if you don't really need it, um, you know, I want to make sure that this goes to the right people who actually could use this. So, um, I mean, that's pretty much it guys. Hopefully you got some value from this. All the links, description, uh, all the link, all the description, all the links are going to be in the description below. Um, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.